Affairs Task Force for the Leewood Chamber of Commerce. This interview is being conducted on behalf of the Johnson County Public Policy Council, comprised of the Chambers of Commerce in Johnson County in the Greater Kansas City Chamber. Jointly, we host a website, votejoco.com, a nonpartisan site where voters can learn more about candidates for public office. Many of the candidates we will be interviewing have completed candidate questionnaires that can also be found on votejoco.com. Today we have with us State Senator John Skubel and State Rep Kelly Warren, both candidates for the Kansas Senate District 11 race. This 11th district covers parts of Overland Park and Leewood. Thank you to Senator School and Rep Warren for joining us today to share with our members and visitors to votejoco.com more about you and what your priorities would be if elected. Since we're coordinate this, coordinating this with the Overland Park Chamber, Kevin Walker may be on as well. Um, Kevin uh, Jeffries from the Leewood Chamber will be holding up signs to show the one minute, 30 seconds, and when to stop with answers. So we want to get started today's conversation by spending three to four minutes each telling us more about you and why you chose to run for the Kansas State Senate. We'll start with Representative Kelly Warren. Thank you, Molly, and thank you to the Johnson County Public Policy Council for uh, hosting this forum today where we could talk uh, with voters. Um, whether you're new to the area or a longtime resident here, you probably already know that this election is all about protecting lives and livelihoods. I'm Kelly Warren, I'm a Republican, and I'm running to be your state senator. Like many of you, my husband and I are proud to be raising our four kids right here. We grew up here. We grew up in Overland Park and we graduated from Shawnee Mission South. Then I went to Cornell University and came back to Kansas for KU Law School. So having grown up here, my husband and I, we knew when it came time to raise our own family, this is right where we wanted to be. We love the thriving community here, the lively neighborhoods, the good schools, and the good job opportunities. So I care deeply about our community, having been in the public schools in Shawnee Mission and now the four kids uh, in the Blue Valley schools. So in 2018, I decided to run as a state representative for Overland Park and Leewood, and I'm proud to be elected. As a, a representative, I've been working to protect our thriving community, whether that's taxes, schools, the environment, transportation, health care. And I saw that there was a need to continue to do that, to bring that effective leadership, to bring, to bring that concern for our community to the Senate, to bring some effective leadership there. So people thought I was doing an effective, good job in the House, and they asked me to run, be a voice, be their voice at the Capitol in Topeka. Too many people are too tired of partisan politics, of politics not getting things resolved. I bring my attorney skills to the Capitol for you, the voter, the constituent, to work on resolving issues that you care about, like getting our schools appropriately funded, like access to health care that's affordable and options for folks for keeping our jobs here, for creating a good tax environment so businesses and families, so seniors can stay and retire here, so new families can come in and get our economy growing. During the COVID-19 stay-at-home orders, I was working again for you, the voter, our community, for jobs, for businesses. I was convening Zoom conferences with local business leaders, restaurants, hair and nail salons, and local retailers, always working for you. Last summer, I also was working for you. I walked my district to hear from you what you thought about policies that affect all of us, healthcare, taxes, and education. I handed out a survey at the doors and was glad to hear from you. I feel I'm an effective leader. I'm an effective leader, that is, when I'm listening to you. That's what I will do as your senator. I will work hard for you. I will work hard for our community and listen and be your voice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Senator Scoopal, you're up next. And just a reminder, three to four minutes telling us a little bit more about you and why you chose to run. Well, thank you, Molly, and thank the uh, council for allowing us this forum. I would like to talk a little bit about my experience, and uh, I am your setting state senator in District 11. Uh, for 10 years, I served in the Overland Park City Council. Uh, being a voice of moderation and one that uh, understands taxation. We have the lowest mill levy of any city of the first class in the state of Kansas, and I'm very proud of that. Two years prior, uh, 
I was on the Yelverton Park Planning Commission, and I was the uh, voice uh, of the city to allow or disallow people bringing businesses or housing into our area. And we were very judicious about that, making sure that it worked for our community. I have done this for a long, long time, and I'm pretty good at it. Uh, 16 years, I've been in an elected position. I was appointed to a number of boards prior to that. I served on the Recreation Committee. Um, but I'd like to talk a little bit more about what I've been doing for the rest of my, my um, time in Johnson County. Um, for 20 years, the last 20 years, I have served as a business development officer for the um, Caw Valley Engineering, where I, where I currently work. Uh, prior to that, for 24 years, I spent my life at, uh, at college in Quivira at Johnson County Community College. I built over a million square feet of first class office space. I uh, probably remodeled every inch of that campus at least once. We um, have grown and grown and grown, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, and then for two years, I was a public school teacher. So I know education from the inside and out. Um, I uh, taught in Kansas City, Kansas, uh, where I was raised by a uh, city police officer and a stay-at-home mom. Um, I uh, went to Emporia State uh, and have a BS in education with graduate hours from Washburn and Pittsburgh State, and those graduate hours are in math education. Uh, right after I went to work at Johnson County Community College almost 42 years ago, I moved to Quivira Falls right across the street from the college when college in Quivira was a four-way stop. A lot of the a lot of the business businesses that moved in were there because of our college and because of our education system. I uh, have uh, stayed close to the college, and in fact, after I had retired, I was called back to finish the last two buildings that were built on campus. Prior to some of the curtain wall systems that they they're building now, I was uh, uh, involved very heavily in the Rainier Center and the um, art uh, building that we have on campus. And uh, I'm very, very proud of that corner. And every time that I drive by, I look at it and I think of all of the lives that have been changed there. So I am a uh, person that has uh, been grounded in this community and I understand what it takes to get things done. So I, uh, I wait for your, your next question. Sure, thank you both. These next questions focus on some key business issues that our chamber members have told us are important to them. So if you can spend approximately two minutes responding to each, that'll allow us time to end for closing remarks. And again, Kevin, I'll have our time signed for you guys. Senator Scoobel, we'll start first this time with you. What do you see as the top three business policy issues facing the state of Kansas in the coming year? I, I think probably the very first that we need to deal with is going to be the state budget. Uh, it would be critical that we get that right. Uh, and serving on Ways and Means in the Senate, it gives me the opportunity to see the entire budget. It gives me the opportunity to see where money is spent, where we can maybe make some uh, adjustments. But uh, that has been uh, something that I'm uh, really interested in is that committee. Um, as most of you know, the K through 12 budget is something that I'm very, very interested in. I serve as the chair of the education committee for Ways and Means. I put forth with the help of others, the first budget in 20 years that has met constitutional requirement that got us out of a lawsuit that had been embroiled for over 20 years. And I'm very proud of that. Uh, education is over half of our budget and it's something that we need to keep our finger on. And uh, that's something that I do. The other, is, the other is transportation. And transportation leads to lots of things, like economic development is one thing that I'm very interested in. When I was on the Overland Park City Council, I had the opportunity to put forth the first 3P in the state of Kansas, public-private partnership, with an interchange off 69 Highway at 159th Street. With that interchange and, and the transportation dollars that were there, the city put some money in, the state put some money in, and the developer on the corner of the southeast uh, quadrant put in money to pay for the bonds. 
that has produced a retail section and a hospital that's less than two years old is expanding. None of that would have been done without that interchange and the effort that was put forth to get that done. We also have uh, multifamily housing. We have very nice single family housing. And something that most of you know, I'm very, very proud of is the elementary, I'm sorry, not the elementary, but the childcare center that's there. We also have a building that shares the fire department and the police department substations. And that has opened up protection for the uh, south portion of, uh, of our city. Uh, those are things that would not have been done with someone that's, that's watching what's going on and making certain that we have the information with infrastructure that uh, follows development. So I'm very proud Thank of that you. project. Thank you. Representative Warren, your top three business policy issues facing the state of, the, of Kansas in the coming year. Thank you, Molly. I think it's all about creating and keeping jobs in Kansas and bringing families here to work those jobs, getting the kids ready to work those jobs. I think our businesses are looking for a workforce that is ready to go, is career ready or college ready, ready to go. So how do we create jobs? We create a good, stable tax environment that's not highest in the nation. We're, I think, about the ninth highest taxing state in the country. And that doesn't bring jobs here, that doesn't bring businesses here. I think we need to look to create a tax policy environment that will work for our families, our working class families, our middle class families, so they can stay here. Now the Senator talked about um, funding education and his experience. However, his first year in office uh, in the Senate, he cut the education budget by 154 million and called himself naive for doing so. so. If you want effective, experienced leadership, I'm that person to do that. I know business, I've been in private practice for more than 20 years, and most of it right here in Johnson County. My law office is right here in the Senate District. My kids go to school right here in the Senate District. My parents still live in the area, so I hear their concerns too from the seniors, from the working class folks. So I think we also need for businesses here to have an affordable access to healthcare, healthcare options that our businesses can afford, that our working class families can afford. And I voted for some of those things as a representative. And I will continue to work and look for resolutions, look for solutions, and make progress on those issues, just like I do as an attorney, working with both sides, bringing people to a resolution and moving on to getting the next problem solved for you. Thank you. We'll move on to our next question. And Representative Warren, this time you'll answer first. So given the current economic situation, balancing the state budget will undoubtedly be a huge task in the coming year. What steps do you feel are key to make sure we balance the budget? Yeah, Molly, that, that's a good point. And we've got to look at a balanced state budget. Kansas does not yet know the full economic impact of COVID-19. We don't know what the budget picture will look like for next year. We might have budget shortfalls but we need to keep down the increasing rate of growth in spending. I propose let's start with zero budget, excuse me, zero based budgeting. And that means we start with zero dollars for the budget next year for each department. And each department needs to justify each tax dollar that they are appropriated for you. Because after all, each tax dollar is your money. It comes out of your pocketbook. It comes out of your wallet. You've worked hard for those. And government should not be wasteful and inefficient in its spending. I'd like to take a look at each of the budgets for each department and see where we can trim excess waste, see what inefficiencies there are, and get Kansas back on the right track. And I worked on that also during the COVID-19 stay-at-home orders. I worked with local businesses, restaurants, hair and nail salons, and other retailers. What do you need to get going again, to get revenue going again in this state? And they said, we need to be reopened, we can do this. Help us do this, and I certainly did. I talked about it when we went back to special session in the House, I talked about it on the House floor with the legislative body, and I got some very effective pieces of legislation in place to specifically address the COVID-19 response for Kansas. 
to get this economy going again, to get jobs back in place, to keep businesses able to stay open and not be lost to bankruptcy forever. So that's what I'm going to do with the budget next year. Thanks so much. Thank you. Senator Skubal, given the current economic situation, balancing the state budget will undoubtedly be a huge task in the coming year. What specific steps do you feel are key to making the balanced budget happen? Molly, we have no idea what the balanced budget is going to look like. We have no idea what our revenue stream will look like, and we really won't know that until we get um, our taxes in on uh, the 15th of uh, July, and it will take a while for us to figure that out. But I, I do want to talk a little bit about um, tax policy. Um, the tax policy that I think that uh, uh, my opponent's talking about is the Brownback tax policy. Uh, during the Brownback area, we had two sales tax increases. Uh, we had three credit downgrades. We had four years of budget shortfalls and nine rounds of budget cuts. That's not going to bring prosperity to our communities. And as far as cutting $156 million out of an education budget, I have no idea what she's talking about. There has not been anyone that sets in the Senate that has been more pro-education than John Scoobell. Uh, and so the, the only way that we'll know what this budget looks like is when we get all of our tax uh, income tax monies in, and hopefully it's going to be something that will have us close to balance. But uh, we'll deal with that when someone goes back to uh, Topeka in January. And uh, I want that to be made. Thank you. And Senator Skubel, we'll start with you on the next question. Can you share with us your views on K-12 education funding in Kansas? Well, I think I alluded to that. Uh, chairing the education budget for Ways and Means gave me the opportunity to set forth a budget that would get us out of a 20-year embroiled lawsuit. Our, our K-12 schools are probably our biggest asset. The entire community of Johnson County has been built on the back of K-12 schools. Our schools are not good, they're not great, they're internationally known. And in order to keep that, we need to keep our great teachers, we need to keep our students in classrooms, and we need to make sure that they have all of the things that they need to make, to make education beneficial and to get a world-class product out of that education. And we do that day in and day out. So I am very proud of education. I've spent almost 30 years of my life in education. And uh, it is my number one concern as I go to Topeka. Thank you, Senator Skubal. Representative Warren, your views on K-12 education funding. Oh, you're muted. Okay. There we go. Thanks, Molly. Uh, well, obviously having four kids right here in the Blue Valley School District, this is a very important issue to me and other school parents like me. So. My first year as a representative, the first couple weeks, I was proud and honored to resolve that decades-long litigation about our schools. So with that behind us, it's time we get the school budget back to the legislature where it belongs. And with that funding issue behind us, I think we can focus on other ways to keep our schools great and make them even better. And speaking of that, uh, you heard my opponent say that uh, education is his number one priority. And I, again, I point to his statement when he voted in 2017 on a school funding budget that cut $154 million from school funding, and he called himself naive. I don't think that's the type of leadership that is going to get issues resolved for Kansans. I don't think it's going to make our schools better with that kind of leadership. So I would like to see the schools have someone in place that can work with them. I'm in the schools every day. I've had kids in elementary, high school, middle school here in Blue Valley. I've served on the PTO board at the elementary and the high school, currently on the high school right now. So I know them from the inside. I currently know them. I talk with parents all the time, with school administrators as well. So I'm very well situated to hear the concerns of our community when it comes to how are our schools performing? And I want them to continue to perform, perform well and even better. Thanks so much. Thank you. Next question, what type of economic development policies will you support? 
to encourage job growth and business expansion in Kansas. And Representative Warren, we'll start with you. Well, I would say generally free markets work the best, where we have supply and demand and where we have government not overtaxing, not overburdening our businesses. We need to create an environment where businesses are welcome and they can call our community, our state home. They know they can stay because we will have a level, even-handed playing field for businesses. And for the people who work there, quite honestly, my opponent in, I think it was 2018, voted for the highest income tax increase on Kansans in Kansas history. It was a $1.2 billion income tax increase for our Kansans, for our seniors, for our middle class families, for our working poor. That does not create an environment that is going to be healthy for business, healthy for families who want to come here, healthy, healthy for families who want to stay, who can afford to stay here. So I want a tax policy that is known, it's not always shifting and changing, because businesses thrive on knowing and being able to plan. So not enough of this, this too much chaos, a big tax hike uh, doesn't help businesses or the people who work there. So I'd like a stable, welcoming environment for businesses, families, and the workers there too. Thank you. Senator Skubel, what type of economic development policies will you support to encourage job growth and business expansion in Kansas? We've, uh, we've mentioned a little bit of that, Molly. Um, basically, what I would like to do is to tie our transportation budget to economic development. And I've told you what the interchange at 159th and 69 Highway has done. Over a billion dollars with the constructions going there. And you probably know this better than I. Most of those jobs that will go in that hospital will be high paying, good jobs, and will attract some of the best uh, physicians, nurses, and technicians uh, across the country into that, that environment. And those things I think are important, but you have to have a policy that will support schools. You have to have a policy that will support transportation. And we're talking about a tax policy. The tax policy that we currently have is not even to the level that we were in 2012, prior to the Brownback tax experiment. We can't go back to that again. That, that experiment is, is I, and I read you off the list of things that it, it's created. Um, we need a tax policy that will allow us to do what government needs to do. I don't know how many emails that, that I got from people that were unemployed. They lost their jobs due to the, to the virus. And we're working in the Department of Labor with a system and a computer system that was built in 1979 you're not going to be able to get people to work in that environment and get anything done. That system is, is uh, antiquated and I, I don't know, most places change out uh, laptops every three years. Uh, this system is old. We have so many needs in our state right now that we will have a, a long period of digging out. But I want everybody to understand, we are not even back to the 12 tax policy. That tax policy tended to work and it was one that we could pay for, and it was one that was still attracting businesses. Businesses don't come to find out how low taxes are. They come to find out what kind of services we have, what kind of schools we have, what kind of roads we have, what type of development that has been created that will allow them to do their business and, and to be profitable. Uh, we have the best workforce in the country, right here in Johnson County. Thank you. For the next question, Senator Scooble, you'll answer first. What are your views on healthcare policy and also Medicaid expansion in Kansas? Well, number one, we need to make sure that our healthcare uh, uh, providers stay alive and that they keep um, a profit to where they don't close their doors. Uh, as I was elected uh, um, the first uh, term, I came back that summer and I was invited to go to Children's Mercy. And I went through the Mercy Day experiment ex experience, which was eye-opening to me. Uh, the things that they're doing down there uh, are, are just beyond belief. I met uh, a family that had a, a son that had a heart that was only half developed. And there was a surgeon that was able to build a half a heart. 
And every two years, they, they rebuild this, this young man's heart. And he's happy. He's running around. Without that type of, of expertise, we're not going to be a caring community. Uh, every every uh, thing that I looked at down there was just over the top. And at the end of the first, first day, um, I sat down with him and I only had one question. What is your no pay? One third. No business could stay alive with a one third no pay, but yet we can do it with healthcare. Uh, and it's because we are subsidizing it with other insurance. And we need to get to the point with accepting monies from the federal government, uh, $3 billion that we've turned down because we won't, we won't pass Medicaid expansion. I uh, want telemedicine expanded. I want Medicaid expansion passed. I don't want everybody running to the ER when they're sick. Uh, it's the most expensive care that we have. And the other thing is, is that no one has records on these, on these people. And so they kind of shoot from the hip. And what I want is a system that will allow people to have a primary care physician that gets to know the family and understands the health of the entire family not just one person. Uh, and so I am for Medicaid expansion. And if we would have gotten it to the Senate floor, I think we had the votes to get that done. And uh, the House had already had the votes. Uh, so so I, I just think that that's something that needs to be done and I'll work on uh, if reelected. Thank you very much. Representative Warren, your views on health care policy in Kansas and Medicaid expansion. Kansas. Thank you, Molly. I oppose Medicaid expansion. It's one more big government spending project that my opponent favors, just like he thinks all the answers to problems are spend more money and more taxes and more government. I don't think that's the best way to solve most problems. What I voted for in the House was some measures that would provide people options, like the Farm Bureau Health Plan that was affordable, that was flexible, that was available for folks. I was at a door the other day and I heard an issue that is very common and that the Medicaid system that we have right now is broken. It's not a good idea to expand a broken system. And I'll tell you one example. I was at the door and this mom told me about her six or seven year old daughter who was disabled but couldn't get Medicaid benefits, though she was the population that was supposed to be receiving benefits. He said the waiting list for benefits is already so long in Kansas, it wasn't even worth it for her to put her little girl on the waiting list. So before we can ask for more government money, for more of your tax dollars to put into a broken system, we need to fix it first. We need to fix it by getting those four or 5,000 people who are already on the waiting list for Medicaid benefits. Get them their benefits. That's who it was intended for the elderly, the disabled, the children, the pregnant mothers. That's who those Medicaid dollars should go for. There's not a pot of money waiting on the U.S. Congress steps to just come to Kansas. So I want to work right here in Kansas to get the people who are already needing those services, get them those services before we look for more of your, honestly, more of your taxpayer dollars. That's not right and that's not fair to you and those who are already waiting to receive their Medicaid benefits. Thank you. For the next question, what do you both believe distinguishes you from your opponent in this race? And we'll start with Representative Warren. Thank you, Molly. And uh, let me tell you about the differences between us. Like I just mentioned, my opponent sees a problem. He wants to spend more of your tax dollars on it. He wants to grow government. I don't think that's a reasonable solution to most problems facing our state. Another difference is I'm working for you, you the voter. I don't work for any other entity. I believe in our community. I'm a mom. I have kids in the schools here and my job is right here in the community. Part of the job of being a senator is showing up and working for you. My opponent skipped the last day of session last year when important votes were being taken that affect you. We were working on tax reform that would affect your pocketbook Confirmation of judges were being considered and protecting capers and teachers pension were being considered. Where was my opponent? 
my opponent told a reporter he was 15 miles from the Canadian border about to go on a week-long fishing trip so he wouldn't be back at the Capitol to vote. This session, I was working hard in the Capitol for businesses who had reached out to me who were saying across the industries, healthcare providers, doctors, uh, restaurants, hair and nail salons, gyms, other retailers, please help us reopen from the COVID stay at home orders. We need you to be the voice for us. So in special session this year, I went back to the Capitol and I spoke on the House floor to the body to keep much needed business liability protection measures in place so businesses could reopen. And in that COVID-19 response bill, there were measures that prohibited businesses from being closed for more than 15 days unless it was put to a vote by the State Finance Council. Where was my opponent? He was in the Capitol too but he voted pass on that measure. I voted yes, and I spoke in favor of it, he voted pass. So I would say when it comes to working hard, who's gonna work harder for you? And if you want a real difference in your election for November, since elections are all about choices, here's who my opponent supports. This is a picture of him supporting the Democrat who's running in the general election for this Senate seat. So if you want a difference in November, Vote Kelly Warren. And Senator Skubal, your turn. What do you believe most distinguishes you from your opponent in this race? Well, it's called experience. Uh, and I have more experience governing than she will ever have. The other thing is, is I want to talk about this vote that she's talking about a year ago. That was during Sine Die. I have uh, been in the uh, state government and the Senate as your senator for four years. In four years, I have never missed one day of the session. Sine die is a time when you go in and it's ceremonial. The information that she gives you about the votes is not something that I heard from, from leadership. I talked with leadership, told them that I've missed the last two times that I wanted to get away because of the length of the session. And then I asked if I could go ahead and take off this one day in four years. And they said, sure, it's not gonna be a problem. There are not gonna be votes that are gonna be contested and we don't need your vote. So to, to listen to this is crazy. I, um, I've i never taken off an afternoon to go home for a child's birthday party. I uh, want you to understand that the things that distinguish me from my opponent are my experience in governing. I have been your state senator for four years. And I also wanna talk a little bit about this bill that I've voted pass on. I have been doing this for 16 years, both as an elected and an appointed official on voting, I have never voted pass in my entire life. I received a 78 page document at 2.30 in the morning and was told that we were gonna vote on it in 45 minutes that was sent to my phone to read. No committee actions on this whatsoever, vote. And I thought to myself, there is absolutely no way that I know what's in this bill. And what she's talking about is, is let's pass the bill uh, and see what's in it. That's what we hear from the Democratic leadership in, in Washington, D.C. Let's vote yes so we can see what's in the bill. Well, that's not the way you govern. The way that you govern, you take the bill through a process. And that's not the process that I'm going to vote for. So once in 16 years, I voted pass. And I'm proud to say that I've done that. If anybody can tell me what was in that bill in 45 minutes, uh, I, I have no idea how they could do that. My education experience is second to none. My private sector experience is something that I think uh, will uh, bring to bear. But again, I, I have spent my entire life with education. And she can say what she wants about me cutting education. There is no one that is more pro-education than John Scoobel in the state Senate. Thank you. So final closing, um, you'll each spend three to four minutes with a summary for our viewers, and we'll start with Senator Scoobal. Well, thank you very much, Molly, and, and thanks to the council for putting this together. Um, before I was elected, um, I started holding town halls. I have had 50 live town halls uh, in the four years that I have been in the state Senate. Uh, I have also had Zoom calls uh, and town halls because of the, of the virus. 
The other thing that I want to say about the virus is, is that it's growing exponentially. And I don't think that, that the, the things that we're doing now with the masks uh, are a hoax. I think that this, that this virus is real. And um, I am your senator. I hope you know how hard I and others work to restore funding to K through 12 schools, getting us out of a 20 year lawsuit with a budget that I put together with the help of others um, and putting together a new 10 year transportation plan. Um, and my opponent talks about how we're going to do, do world class schools and how we're going to do transportation. And I voted for this. And now I want to go ahead and talk about taxes. This will not be done without taxes. If you think you can cut taxes and, and make our, our uh, entire community prosperous, you're going back to the Brownback era. That didn't work. Sales tax increases, and, and my opponent wants to cut sales tax, and she wants to cut taxes on your real estate. She wants to cut taxes everywhere, and she wants to fund everything. It's no different than at home. If you buy a new house, and a new car, and your income stays the same, and then you decide you want a bigger house and a better car, and you don't have enough money to pay for it, it doesn't work. And, and so the budget has to have priorities. And I'm not saying we fund everything, but I am saying the important things like our schools and our transportation thing system is something that's important to me. And I'm very proud that I fixed this budget. And I want everyone to realize this before we leave, we are not back to the 12 taxing levels. Uh, and when she can say whatever she wants about how we are raising taxes too fast and how we, there is no one that sat on the Overland Park City Council that didn't worry about the single widow living at 75th and Metcalf on her husband's social security when we got ready to do taxes. I always thought about that before there was ever a, a mill levy increase. Uh, and so with Ways and Means, I have an opportunity to watch what goes on with all of the dollars being spent. And I'm very proud of the budget that we put together. I think that the budget works. It will be a chore when we get back to see how many dollars we have and what we need to do to fix it. And uh, I'm more than capable of doing that. I went through the recession in 08 and 09 and was governing then on the Overland Park City Council. I know how to fix things. I know what education means to our community. I know what transportation can do for our state. And uh, I am asking for your vote on or before August the 4th. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Skubal. Representative Warren, your turn for closing summary. Thank you, Molly. Part of the 16 years that my opponent has been in government, he has voted when on the city council to raise property taxes by more than 46% on those widows he was talking about. He has raised taxes on property taxes right here. He's a creature of government. Um, he's been 16 years in office and I believe it's time for effective new leadership in the Senate, and I believe that starts with me. He talked about the COVID-19 response bill that he voted pass on. Well, I knew what was in it because I'd been working on it all session and all the pieces of it. I served on the House Judiciary Committee, so I saw it, and it was pieces of information and legislation that had been worked on and talked about all session. So I was able to read it and I was able to find out what was in it before I voted on it. And a hardworking senator should have been able to do that for you too, It'd be a yes. <laughs> and he's very proud of his education background. Well, let me read you a quote that he said to the Wichita Eagle. He said about the school budget in 2017 when he was a senator, here's how naive I am. I kind of fell apart. This is probably the most important vote we're going to take and I don't even know what to do. That's a quote from February 9th, 2017. I don't think that's a particularly effective senator working hard for you and knowing what the facts are. I'm an attorney. I have to know the facts every day at work. I have to know both sides of the issue. I have to know what's important to each side of the issue and work together to get it resolved and move on. I was proud to do that for the school finance crisis, get that resolved. I that. I that. 
Now it's time to focus on getting our schools even better and what's happening in the schools. It takes a lot of work to be your senator. You've heard how I work hard as your representative. As an attorney, I have practiced looking at how laws are written. And I know that it's important because we have unintended consequences if laws are written vaguely or unable to be implemented in a way that's understandable by our community, who they're intended to help, which is you. There was nothing ceremonial about the, the vote on sine die that my opponent skipped. Like I said, there was confirmation votes in the Senate about judges in Kansas. There was a vote on funding teachers' retirement through papers. And there was a vote to bring federal tax reform to you. And my opponent skipped out on those votes to go fishing. I don't think that's who we need representing our community. I don't think that helps our community thrive. I am the leader who will help our community thrive. I've lived here, I've grown up here, I went to school here, my kids are in school here, my parents live here. So I hear from their group of friends, from my school parent friends, from the PTO members about what's important. I hear it on the playground, at the parks, talking to neighbors at baseball games, soccer games, basketball games. I've coached my kids and my friends' kids in softball and volleyball. So I know our community, I'm a part of it. I'm not a creature of government. I'm just like you, a person growing up here, working here, living here, raising their family in this great community. And I wanna keep it thriving for you. And I want you to have a choice in November, a real choice, instead of more of the same partisan games of the two opponents working as part of a team. I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's right. So vote for me, Kelly Warren, either August 4th, or you can vote in advance. Many of you have told me you've received your mail-in ballot application. If you turn that back in, you'll get your mail-in ballot in the mail, or you can vote in person around the district starting July 20th. I'm Kelly Warren. I'm a Republican running to be your state senator. Thank you very much. Thank you both, Representative Warren and Senator Scoobel, for joining us today, sharing your time, and sharing this very important information for our voters in this race. As a reminder to all watching, more information for all of the candidates can be found at votejoco.com. That's votejoco.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Molly. Thanks, Thank uh, Kevin. Thank you. Y'all have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, guys.